Today is the day that New Jersey fights back. It's the day we fight back against a tax policy that treats New Jersey like America's piggy bank. It's the day we fight back uh, against a bully president and a vindictive Republican Congress that raided the pockets and futures of middle class families, all to give big corporations and wealthy CEOs a trillion dollar windfall. That isn't a fight we asked for. We didn't ask to be targeted by President Trump to be a quote, non-quote, blue state. But today we're here to say we're not going to take it lying down. The stakes are simply too high. Nearly 40% of New Jersey taxpayers, that's nearly two million people, claim the state and local tax deduction or SALT deduction as it's called when they file their federal income tax returns. Those SALT deductions average about $18,000 per tax filer. That's far and above the arbitrary cap imposed by the Congress under the Republican leadership. And it means the average taxpayer who itemizes their returns may lose $8,000 in deductions this year alone. So I'm proud to be here with the governor and the legislators uh, to say with one voice, enough is enough. This bill will help middle class families here in New Jersey avoid a tax increase. It will help ensure our schools and police and fire departments and local governments have the resources necessary to educate our kids, to provide public safety, and to promote economic opportunity. You know, throughout my years in politics and certainly in the Congress, I've heard my Republican colleagues talk a great deal about states' rights. Well, the Trump tax plan is an assault on state rights. Historically, the SALT deduction has served as a way to encourage states to make critical investments in their people, investments that create economic opportunity and ultimately make them less reliant on federal assistance. But by capping SALT, Republicans have capped the rights of states to set their own tax policies and protect folks from double taxation. Now, I'm not going to tell you that the path ahead will be easy, uh, but as the governor said, there are 33 other states, including from states that are not blue states. And therefore, any review of any such policy has to be a review of all such policies. Uh, Treasury, ter Treasury Secretary Mnuchin has called such efforts across the country ridiculous and even went so far to tell me at a Senate finance hearing that New Jerseyans were trying to abuse the system by prepaying property taxes. So I'll say now what I said to him then. You have it backwards. The system is abusing us. And what's really ridiculous is how uh, my colleagues have totally abandoned a commitment to fiscal responsibility. This tax bill borrowed nearly $2 trillion from China to lavish corporations with huge tax cuts and sold Americans false promises of higher wages and better jobs. Well, we didn't buy what President Trump was selling, not for a second. Since the Republican tax bill took effect, corporations have announced more than $390 billion in stock buybacks. That's not about rising wages. It's not about greater benefits. Uh, it's not about helping to build our economy. In other words, this money isn't trickling down to workers. It's being funneled straight to wealthy shareholders. Uh, and it wasn't for free. It'll cost us trillions more in debt to future generations like my granddaughter who will have to pay. The Congressional Budget Office tells us that it will saddle us with a trillion dollar deficit per year by 2019, that's next year already, even with an economy that is at full employment. It will leave us without the resources we need to rebuild our infrastructure and prepare Americans to compete in the 21st century. And I'm fearful that it will lead us to painful cuts in Medicare and Social Security at a time when more seniors are going to be relying on these programs than ever before in our history. Only in Washington could Republicans pass a tax law that adds $2 trillion to the debt, but still manages to hike taxes on millions of middle class families. You would have thought that the president could have managed to cut the taxes for everyone with a $2 trillion price tag. Instead, about 40% of New Jersey families will wind up paying an average of $2,100 more in taxes, or find themselves with no real tax cut at all.
and the cap on the salt deduction is one of the prime reasons their tax bill is going up. So today we're doing what over 33 other states have already done in some form, authorize a local tax credit for charitable contributions to approved nonprofits set up by local governments that provide taxpayers with a property tax credit as the governor set up to 90% of the value of contributions. And those donations, in essence, help fund our schools, pay our teachers, build new roads, keep us safe. Now, I fought tooth and nail against the tax plan, even offering an amendment to fully reinstate the SALT deduction that in the Senate uh, lost by exactly a party line vote. Every Democrat voted to reinstore uh, the deduction. Every Republican voted against it. I also put forward uh, common sense amendments that would have rolled back these deficit exploding corporate tax cuts if workers failed to see higher wages. Yet clearly lifting working people out of poverty wasn't a tax priority for my colleagues. To be clear, we remain committed to real bipartisan tax reform that helps small businesses grow that prepares Americans to compete, that raises wages for workers. But in the meantime, I'll be working on the Senate Finance Committee, which oversees the IRS and the Department of the Treasury to fight for New Jersey and defend the bill that this governor will sign today. The IRS commissioner is up for his nomination, and you can be sure that when he comes before the Senate Finance Committee, I will be grilling him about what we and 33 other states believe we have the absolute right to do. We're going to do everything we can to help hardworking New Jersey taxpayers avoid getting taxed twice on the same dollar. We've had enough of those who treat New Jersey's fast-moving, innovative economy like a piggy bank for subsidizing less productive states. We're going to stand up for our families. We're going to be Jersey strong because when the cause is just, we don't give in and we